So let's look at the translation between representation FRQ and what you're expected to do for the ENM exam. There's four main things that you're going to be asked to do in this case. You're going to create a visual representation that describes a scenario. And this can be like a bar graph or a free body diagram. It's very common what you're going to do here, but it's going to be some kind of drawing visual of like what it is. It could be the direction of the electric fields or whatever like that. You will derive an equation, so some kind of derivation in there, which is pretty standard. That's like a pretty standard thing that we do a lot. And we will also draw a graph. So you'll be, those three things will always occur. Some kind of visual representation, deriving an equation, drawing a graph. And then you will do one of these things, which is like whether two answers are consistent with each other or if they change the situation, how does that gonna affect the result or anything like that? Or if we alter the scenario a bit, then like how is that going to change it? So one of these things will happen. So those are the four parts that will happen in here. And this is a 12 point question, right? 20, suggested time, 25 to 30 minutes. So let's go through one of the examples of a translation between representations or I'm gonna call it TBR for short, a TBR question. Uh, on here. So we have this long solenoid with a central axis along the z-axis as a current I0 is shown. The length of the solenoid is much larger than the radius of the solenoid loops. Figure two shows a cross-sectional view of the middle of the solenoid. So this is looking at it on here with the currents going like this. So it's like you're looking, um, it looks like you're the, you're looking on this side. I think you're looking this way here. Uh -huh, because because you can see on the axis, this is positive Z. So positive Z is coming towards you, and then positive Z is here to the left. So this is your looking, your eye is over here. You know, some eyelashes. And that's what you're, um, that's what you're looking that way. Okay. Um, region one is centered in the central axis. Region two is inside the solenoid, but offset from the central axis. And region three is outside the solenoid. Inside the square for each region, indicate the direction of the magnetic field produced by the solenoid by drawing one of the symbols shown in the table. If the magnetic field is zero negligible, just write zero below that region. So remember with the solenoid, all of the magnetic fields are gonna be, because of the current going like this, it's gonna be almost all interior. Like it's gonna be zero out here. That's kind of our assumption is that the magnetic field is pretty close to zero outside the solenoid. But inside we gotta use our right hand rule. So we gotta think about our thumbs are going to go in the direction of the current. And this is going to be like, if I look at the left side, so if I'm on the left side of the ring, my thumb is pointing up and my finger, if this is the ring, my fingers are going to curl into the page. So it's going to be into the page here and here. So that's that visual representation. Okay. We inside, we indicated the direction. So it's going to look like that. They didn't ask for the magnitude, but they ask you to do one of these three symbols. So it's going to be put a circle around it, I guess, circle with an X through it. Um, one of these one of these symbols here, you're supposed to put into there. All right, cool. Um, a small conducting loop of radius R0 is placed at the center of the solenoid, okay, as shown in the cross section. The solenoid radius is three R0, okay? Um, and the solenoid has N0 turns per unit length along the axis, starting at time t equals zero. The current in the solenoid is varied according to the equation here where I, zero, and B are positive constants, and the positive current is taken to be in the clockwise direction. Derive an expression. Okay, so positive current is uh, clockwise direction, this way. Okay, cool, that's the positive direction for the current. Derive an expression for the absolute value of the induced EMF in the smaller loop for times T greater than or equal to zero. Express your answer in terms of R, zero, N, zero, I, zero, B, T, and physical constants. Begin your derivation. So this is the deriving part, okay? And if we're inducing an EMF, that's due to a rate of change in the flux. And so we got to think about what the flux is going to be, right? So inside the solenoid, one of the facts is we remember the magnetic field is pretty uniform, right? So this is just B times the area. Normally it's the integral of B dot dA, but the magnetic field is pretty uniform inside the, inside the solenoid. We do assume that. Now the air, so this is the derivative of B times A. Now, in this case, the B is the part that is actually changing. The area is constant because those loop area, right? The flux is going through this thing. That area isn't really, so this is gonna be A times D, B, D, T, the rate of change of the magnetic field. Now we have a current, so we have to understand what the magnetic field is depending on the current because I, I need to find an expression for B so that I can then take the derivative of that. And so we have to remember what is 
the equation of the magnetic field through a um, through a solenoid. And so, so we're gonna look at that as mu naught um, i times n, where n zero. Okay, so that is the formula. It's mu i n. Okay, so that is the um, that's the magnetic field. So then, what's the derivative of that? Well, the number of turns and the this these those are constant mu naught and n naught. So then it's just di dt. Di dt is going to be the derivative of this thing. So that's mu naught n naught derivative of that. Well, derivative of one is zero. Derivative of this is negative two bt. So it's going to be i zero times negative two bt. And so that plugs into the area. Now, what's the area of the loop? It's pi times r zero squared because that the flux is through this loop. It's not through the whole solenoid. It's through the loop here, right? Because that's the part that's we're inducing the current on. So that's going to be times mu naught n naught i zero times negative two bt. That's the induced EMF. And then they just want the magnitude, so you can drop the 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 you can just drop the negative sign. So it's going to be two pi r zero squared mu naught n naught i naught bt. That's like a whole bunch of variables. But that would be the derivation there. Okay. So let's see. Let's go to the next part. Now we have to do the graph sketching on the axes in figure four. Sketch the graph of the magnetic flux through the small connecting loop due to the current and solenoid as a function of time from t equals zero until the flux reaches zero. On the horizontal axis, label the time at which the flux is zero with an expression in terms of the constant p. So we want to label. We've got to label this time when the flux is zero. So let's look at this. So the flux. We're going to go back to our flux equation was the B times the area. And the B was mu naught I N. So this is going to be mu naught N naught pi R zero squared. And then the uh, that's the area. That's the area. And then B was equal to um, mu naught and like times I, which would be I naught times one minus B T squared. Right. So that is that is our expression for the flux. So at time zero, it's going to be maximum, and then it's going to be like, per, per, it's like a quadratic in T. And when is it equal to zero is when this guy is equal to zero, because these are all constants. So we want to know when one minus BT squared is equal to zero, and that's going to occur at um, one over B, and then square root, right? And so we're going to say one over B is when, so it's going to start here, and it's going to kind of shrink until zero, kind of like a parabola. And it's a, oh, actually, sorry, it's minus bt squared. So it's a downward facing parabola. So it actually should do, probably do this, concave down parabola like that. OK, so that um, that's good. And then um, I don't know if you need to make it cross. You just need to sketch it, oops, uh, until the flux reaches zero. So then just label that when that's zero. That's one over, oh, sorry, one over square root of one over b, right? Square root of one over b. OK, and that's it. That's good. OK, indicate the factor by which the vertical intercept of the graph you drew in part c would change if if at all if the loop inside the solenoid has a radius of 2r0. Briefly justify your answer. Well, so the flux, if we look at our expression for the flux, Right, it was b times the area. So the magnetic field part isn't changing. That part's staying the same because it's pretty uniform in the solenoid. So we're just doing the area. If I double the radius, this is going to be times four the area, and so that's going to be four times the flux. So then this thing's going to be times four. And so the, that y when t is equal to zero, this thing, will, this whole thing will be four times as much. So it's going to um, the y-intercept increases by 4x because the flux is proportional. They want you briefly. You don't have to do you don't have to do a huge amount of sentences. The area which quadruples when we double the radius. That would be sufficient, something like that. And so those are the four parts of the TBR FRQ, right? This one they ask you, this is the one where they change the scenario. But another one could have been, like, from this derivation, can you connect how these are two are similar or something like that? I don't know. Um, but, like, that's that's kind of how this one of these three things will happen on the four parts. But that's the four parts on that FRQ.